Hi guys, today we're going to go ahead and change a standard wall socket and we're going to upgrade it to a USB style. Um, so it's still a wall socket, but you get your two USB ports. Just kind of a nice little upgrade, pretty easy to do. Um, I have a few tools selected to do that. You want to use, this is like a $6 tool at the hardware store. And you can put this in and it will tell you if you have correct polarity and that you have power there. That's the easiest way to check it. And when you turn off the breaker, you can make sure that light's turned off. The second tool, about the same price, and it just shows 110 or 220 or even higher. And you can simply put that into the wall, into the socket, like so. And you can see right now it says 110 on there. I don't know if you can see that really well. But the 110 lights up, so that shows it's live. Or you can use a standard volt multimeter, as long as you have a high enough rating for AC voltage. Um, you can put that in. You can see on the meter right there, it's 120 volts, 121 volts. So that's your first step. We already know it has power to it, but that's how you check it. Step two is going to be finding the breaker and turning the power off. So locate your breaker box. Ours happens to be down in the basement. So um, looking up here, I have one that's marked kitchen outlets. I'll shut that off. That's kitchen outlets, dishwasher and disposal. So we'll try those three first. Um, sometimes it's a guessing game because of how it's wired, but we'll try those and we'll go back upstairs and we'll check for power and we'll be right back. Okay, now we're back up here. You can start with this tool if you're using this tool and you can now see the lights are not on. So I'd be confident that that's power, one of those breakers was the power. But I like to check with my voltmeter as well. See, I have zero volts. So I'm satisfied with that. That's double checking. Well, since we have the tools, we can triple check. And our light is not on on this tool either for the 110. Okay, so the next step, we'll take the wall outlet cover off, one screw in the middle. Sometimes they have a, a little washer that holds the screw in place so you don't drop it. When you're putting it in so I try to leave it in there if you can and then it just has an upper and lower screw that goes into the box that's in the wall so we'll take that out sometimes it's easier to use the Phillips head side of your screwdriver for these screws but you can use flat or Phillips for that you don't need a lot of tools to do this job I just have a combination screwdriver that's both Phillips and flathead, number one and number two in size. Make sure the screw is all the way out so you don't yank on the outlet and pull your box out. Now this is uh this one just literally has one set of wires going to it. So it's jumped off of a, a set of wires back here, but we're just literally gonna replace wire for wire here, okay? This black wire is your power wire. Power wire goes to the gold side. Your white wire is a common wire and the screws are gonna be silver. See the difference? The heads of the screws here are gold and the common wire is gonna be a silver screw. And then you have an earth ground, which is just the bare ground wire, goes down to the green. So back to removing this, this is our power, if you will, our hot wire. Um, and it's a ring style. You can put a loop in the end and then you can take it off and re-put it. But this is not a loop style. It's, it's actually easier to do. You just push the wire in the hole and then you tighten down the screw on the side and that's what holds it in. So they didn't mark this. Um, for whatever reason, and if they did, it's not clear to me, 
which is power and which is common and which is earth ground is obvious because it's the green screw for the earth ground, which is your bare wire. But the smaller, the smaller port, if you will, is what your power side is. So what we'll do is we'll put the power on this side. We'll put the common, the white wire on this side and we'll loop the earth ground. Don't forget to put your gasket on there um, or your, I would call it a gasket. It's kind of a foam piece. It's a piece of insulation. So you don't want to wire it and then put it in the wall and not have that there because uh, you'll have to redo it again or cut it to put it on and that won't hold in place. So uh, make sure you put that on first and this cover plate just snaps on the front when we're, when we're done. But what we're going to do is we're going to wire uh, the new outlet and then we will put it in a position to where it's safe and then we will check with our tool, we'll check polarity that it's correct and that we have power when we turn it back on. Polarity just means that the power is on the power side and the ground's on the ground side. You got to make sure that's correct or it will not, it could burn up your devices. Um, the cool thing about this guy is down here, the two yellow lights will come on if it's correct. If it's backwards, it will light up different with the red on there. Um, says if the hot and the ground are reversed, it'll be red with a space and then uh, the yellow light will be on. So this is almost like a troubleshooting guide if you did do it wrong. That's why I highly recommend this tool over anything. But I like to double check with my voltmeter um, all the time as well. But that's the reason that I like this tool. So we're going to go ahead. Um, I'm not going to reuse where we have plenty of wire here. So I'm just going to actually cut it because I want a straight piece of wire to go into the new uh, receptacle anyway. So if you have a little pair of wire strippers like so, that makes it a lot easier. Let's go ahead and strip the wire back just a little bit. It's a solid core wire. And then we'll do the same here. Strip that back. And then now we're going to go on the uppers. This is made to slide in this hole here. We have to back it out a little bit more. And the, you, the reason that there's two is so you can run it in here and through to another one if you wanted to, another uh, outlet or something like that. But we don't have to in this case because it's just wired for one. So you put your wire in, make sure you can see that okay. And then you're simply just going to tighten this down from the side, and I'll show you how that works if you didn't see it earlier. Basically, it's just a little plate right here, and when you run the screw in, it just squishes where that wire is, the plate here squishes to the inside. So it's pretty easy to do. We'll take our common, go Okay, so after installing your power, your black wires, your hot wire, and your common, which is your white, hopefully you can see this well enough. You kind of take your U-shaped piece, or kind of like a ring, if you will, and get it started around your screw, maybe back it up a little bit if you need to. See how it dropped in? And then take your, you can use pliers or if, you're cut, if your strippers are like these. So you get a nice pinch in there. And there's a gap at the bottom, not on the sides, on this particular one. So I would prefer to come out the side of it. It will be a tighter fit. And it matters, everything matters as far as it being tight. You gotta really, Tighten things down and make sure, do a nice wire pull test and all that. Make sure everything's nice and tight. Um, and I'll double check that again. And then, like I said, we're going to turn, I'm going to put it in place and I'm going to start the screws just to have it held safely. And then we'll turn the breaker back on. We'll double check polarity um, with two devices and make sure that's correct. And we will go from there. Okay. Now back to the basement, we will turn our breakers back on. If something was wired wrong or had failed, let's just pop a breaker straight away. So we're back upstairs. We are going to put in our plug and then 
you can see that the two lights are lit. The two ye yellow or the two amber lights, I'm sorry, are lit. So that's why this is a handy tool. Shows right here that's correct. So we're powered up correctly. Um, you can check with your multimeter if you want to make sure. That just tells you your power correctly. This tells you that you have the right amount of voltage. So we have the right amount of voltage getting through, 120 volts, which is great. And again, you could use this tool as the 110, and the 110 lights up on that. So one thing you can do when you're putting this in is use a square, with this out of the way, just as you're tightening it up and using that as a line. So when you're done, everything will be lined up and look correct on your wall. Uh, you don't have to, you can just eyeball it, but I like to use a square. I check this surface of the backsplash in this level. Um, and that's it. You take your cover piece, you snap it on, and there you go. You now have a USB updated wall outlet, and it's not too hard to do. Okay, thanks for watching.